has given us victory. No matter how the wind blows, can never pull a stone. Surely I know. He has given us victory. The primary commandment. First Bible lesson, John 1, 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Second Bible lesson, Matthew twenty two thirty seven. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Golden text, Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Total Surrendering Beloved, from now until eternity, we will not talk about any other person but our Lord Jesus Christ. This is so because He alone loves God, and in Him lies the hope for the world's salvation. He is the only one who has taught us the truth, and our lives depend on Him. The first lesson reads that the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came from Jesus Christ. The problem of the entire world stems from the fact that you do not hear the word of God and you neither accept it nor practice. If the people of the world had loved God with all their hearts and minds and above all believed and had seen him as the only hope for men's salvation, we would not have lamented, experienced lack, or had any problems at all. If we had sanctified our heart, refrained from sins and practiced his divine teachings, we would abide in peace. A lot of people may not have realized that the attendant reward derivable from practicing the word of God is far more valuable than one person owning the whole world. After all, his word is more than the whole world. You have been enjoined thus, this is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. John fifteen twelve. Brotherhood of the cross and star is actually the real kingdom of God you have been hearing about. We shall continue to preach love to you at all times. When you have this love richly endowed in you, then you would not commit sins, and you would be perfect and pure as he is. And above all, you would be saved. If you listen to, assimilate, accept, and put to practice all that you have been taught about the kingdom of God, I am convinced that the world will be problem-free. And in addition, peace will return to the world. It is through a perfect heart that you can practice righteousness. Mercy comes from the mind, patience, love, humility, benevolence, honesty, obedience, and all virtues are the function of the mind. Even truth is a fruit of the heart. And so, if one state of mind is negative, nothing good can ever come from such a man. This accounts for why our Lord Jesus Christ said to the Pharisees, Ye generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Matthew twelve thirty four. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Matthew twelve thirty four through 35 And so you would realize that loving God with all our hearts, minds, and lives is nothing to toy around with if we must be joint heirs in the kingdom of God. If we are rich in righteousness, we would behold God in our lives, and we would not have time to commit all sorts of sinful acts. Ipso facto, we would spend all our time and lives in doing the work of God. For Christ said, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my word, hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. John twelve forty eight. Let us abide in the love of God, and if we allow this love to dwell in us, it will be our armor. In so doing, we will not commit sin. I am revealing to you in clear terms that the problem of the whole world emanates from the fact that the world has rejected the one that has come to lead mankind, among other creations of God, to the perfect knowledge of truth. Wife, children, husband, money, Houses, cars, jewelry, position, academic qualifications, clothing, etc., as you often say, are not the problems of the world. The problems of the world are traceable to the fact that you have bluntly refused to heed God's instruction. He has brought grace, salvation, life, help, mercy, truth, love, goodness, and all virtues of God to mankind, but unfortunately, 
We do not want these things. Instead, we relish in wallowing in vices all life long. A local adage has it that the first person who goes to the stream at dawn fetches the cleanest water. Our Lord Jesus Christ is God. He knows God and loves him. Hence, he advises us to love God with all our hearts, minds, and souls. And right now, as many as those who practice these words are saved, it was this reason that our Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. John 15, 5 If indeed we reject his teaching, where do we go from here? First look at what is happening in the world today. What do you think is the cause? Recall that our Lord Jesus Christ asked his disciples why they called him Lord when they did not keep his words. Let us start now to practice his words, bearing in mind that if we reject him, we have rejected our lives. Do not be boastful of anything either in the West, East, and North, or South. Rather rejoice that you have practiced his word. Life cannot be gotten from the North, South, East, or West. In God do we have life, and without him we are perished. Our Lord Jesus Christ brings grace, mercy, truth, etc. to us. All the earthly things cannot save you. The only shortcut to your salvation is to accept him, practice his word, which is love, and teach others to do so. Do not preoccupy your mind with any frivolous thing other than to practice the word of God. You have to love him with all your mind, heart, life, and indeed soul. Thank him for bringing grace and truth to us. We have to appreciate his love for mankind by giving him our selfless service. How can you do things? There is no way you can go without loving God with all your heart, mind, and soul unless your heart is pure. Good enough, the Bible discloses to us that blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Matthew 5, 8. People die because they lack this true perception. After all, no one who has seen God ever dies. He can never die. God brought you into this kingdom, but the fact is that you still wallow in sins and you do not practice his word, and that is why you cannot see him. Except you love God with all your mind, heart, soul, and indeed all your life, you cannot have life. You have no share in the kingdom of God. After all, what does it cost you to love God selflessly? You only stand to be rewarded bountifully, and in addition, all your problems will cease. All you will see is God and his blessings will be showered on you and you will not hear nor take advice from anybody apart from him. This is so because you have seen him face to face and you will have peace, life, love and all good things in abundance. If you are rich in love, you would only think and practice love and nothing more. One is enslaved to what one loves best. If you love God alone, you would not have anything to do with sins. We would take him as everything to us. He is grace and truth. Anyone who loves God with all his heart, mind, and soul has no problem whatsoever. Such a person, too, does not bother about how, where, and when to see God, for he has God lavishly in him. Such a person does not lack anything because he is the embodiment of all needs. Read our first lesson. First Bible lesson, John 1, 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The Age of Grace Beloved, do you not see the fact that our Lord Jesus Christ brought for us love, life, power, truth, among other virtues? This is so because Moses had condemned the world, but Christ came and salvaged mankind by sacrificing his dear life. Was it not for this reason that Peter asked Christ the number of times that he could be offended and still forgive the person? In his answer, Christ told him that until 70 times 7. Matthew 18, 21 through 22. Since our Lord Jesus Christ condemned both counting of sins on people and hatred, but advised people to embrace the love of God, it means he was with God. John 8, 4 through 11. Hebrew 10, 16 through 18. It was because of this that he conquered every adversity with ease. 
You may have heard that right from the inception of the world, only our Lord Jesus Christ has seen God. He is the only one who has remained in God's bosom and also revealed God to mankind. The story that Moses, Galatians 3.19, Abraham, Jacob, and the rest of such prospects saw God as a fallacious statement. This is because such a story has no element of truth. But it is true that Christ saw God because he loved God with all his mind, heart, and soul. The instruction that we all should love God with all our heart, mind, and soul is from God. Therefore, it is imperative that we practice same, should we desire to be blessed. You are asked to practice this and see if it would not work. Do you not know that it was as a result of Christ's interest and love for the Father that he always called on him? Also remember that when Philip asked him to show them the Father, he said, as quoted, Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? They that hath seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me he doeth the works. John 14, 9 through 10. It does not cost anything to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind. Our Lord Jesus Christ knew the essence of loving God wholeheartedly, hence he strongly enjoined us to practice same. In fact, it was as a result of Christ's total love for God that he did not encounter any problem. He does not only live forever, but also successfully hands over all that the Father had given to him, to us. But it is really pathetic that we have left such goodness and gone to embrace evil. The parable illustrated by Christ in Matthew 7, 6 is solely about us. This is because we have rejected his teachings, which would have solved our problems to embrace wrong ideas and values and the rejection of the teachings of Christ constitutes our problems. This is a demonstration of the fact that the pearl has been thrown before the swine. You have been sending diverse requests to God, but... How many of you have loved him wholeheartedly? God is not in money, houses, cars, etc. Rather, he is in your heart. And you would be made whole if you should love him wholeheartedly. Have you not heard what Christ said to Philip? He said, Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. John fourteen eleven. Once you accept God wholeheartedly and believe in him, he will dwell in you and you would feel his existence in you. You would also have his bountiful joy. Having been told of the importance of loving God wholeheartedly, it is imperative that you turn a new leaf and imbibe the culture of love. You should from this moment start to cultivate the love of God in you. It is mandatory for all to love God wholeheartedly, for by so doing, nothing would hurt us. When the Pharisees demanded of Christ to show them how the kingdom of God is, he replied them thus, Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Luke seventeen twenty one. Most of you request God to bless you with money to enable you to serve him diligently. You want to get money to help you buy motor cars and build houses for him. But this is just the secondary aspect of it all. But the primary aspect, which you ought to do, is to love him, God, with all your heart, mind, and soul. God needs nothing apart from a holy and spotless heart. If you have such purity of heart, for sure you will see him. One of our spiritual courses says, If your heart is pure, I will make it my abode. Therefore, if your heart is pure, certainly he will come in and live in you. It is only there and then that you will be able to see him instead of ghost, witches, juju, mermaid, etc. In fact, should God dwell in you, you will be completely free from trouble. So there is the urgent need to have a pure heart that is fit for God to live. The Bible has it that, unto the pure all things are pure, but even their mind and consciousness is defiled. Titus 1.15 you all have been commissioned to go into the world and teach this particular injunction to the people of the world. And if you and the people of the world practice this injunction, the joy of God will be yours. 
The injunction does not come from anyone here on earth or beneath the earth. It is from the Almighty Father. It is only when we practice these teachings that we will know the source of the teachings. This gospel constitutes the key to knowing God and being with him. Therefore, stop seeking for God in different parts of the world. Instead, stay put where you are and love him wholeheartedly and be pure, for you will see him at will. By so doing, you are saved. Read our second lesson again. Second Bible lesson, Matthew 22, 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. The First Injunction Having read the above excerpt, what has Jesus Christ enjoined you to do? This is what you have to inform everybody about. Hardly will you see anybody asking about what God expects of them and what Christ enjoins all to practice. You would hold yourself responsible and your blood will be on you should you fail to practice this injunction. The injunction given in this sermon by Christ constitutes the first and foremost commandment. It is the injunction that constitutes our joy, truth, and love. Should we practice this gospel, we would see the reward instantly. Whoever fails to see such a reward should know that he has not practiced this injunction. Should anyone fail to behold God, it means then he has not loved him with all his heart, soul, and mind. Loving God with all your heart. If peace eludes you, it means you do not love him with all your heart, mind, and soul. If you find yourself in an adverse situation, then know that you do not love him with all your heart, mind, and soul. When Christ told his disciples that he was going to Bethany, they asked why he should go back to where they sought to stone him. So he answered them and said, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walketh by day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. John eleven nine. If you should love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, you would never encounter any kind of problem. You would never see nor come across anything evil. All you will see will be the Father, and you would only talk about the Father at all times. Christ was always calling on the Father, referring to Him at all times. You can neither see the Father nor talk about Him for now, because you do not love Him with all your mind, heart, and soul. Can you now see the reason why, when Christ attended the feast with His parents at Jerusalem, and after the feast, the parents did not see Him for two days, when the parents came back and saw Him, He asked them, What was their business with Him? He further asked him whether he should not abide in his father's house. If you love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, you will never encounter any problem nor see anything evil. It is only the father that would completely occupy your thought. With this type of love, you will never be annoyed. It is only the father who wills everything in your life. This is the reason why Christ warned, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. John 2, 15 The main theme of this sermon and others to come shall be centered on how to love your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. It was because of the lack of this love that Christ reminded people thus. Matthew fifteen eighteen. These people draweth nigh unto me with their mouths, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Search yourselves, because most of you only profess to love God with your lips, but your hearts are far from Him. Since He does not wish that we should perish, this is the reason why He has seen it necessary to deliver this message to us, so that we would go back to that first love. I feel that God loves us so much that He would not want us to perish. This is the reason why He has given us this gospel at this eleventh hour, so that we would not forget these facts. It is written, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Revelations 2, 4 through 5. Today has really proved the fact that God's love for us is so great and so unfathomable. It is said that though you bestow all your wealth to feed the poor and give your body to be burned, if you fail to love your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, it avails you nothing. 
1 Corinthians 13, 3. Whether you have money or not, you are beautiful or not, educated or not, these things are not important. All God needs from you is to love him with all your heart, mind, and soul, and you will behold him. He will dwell in you and take control of your life. You will not even need food, money, or any carnal thing apart from the Father. Remember that Moses has said that when the time comes, God shall raise a prophet amongst you, whom you all should listen to, and that whoever shall not listen to his voice shall be cut off from the face of the earth. Acts 3, 22-23 If somebody should ask you the reason why we are faced with problems, the simple answer is that we have refused to listen to the voice of God. The Grace of God If the people of the world should seek for the solution to all the problems plaguing them, you should advise them to start to love God with their heart, mind, and soul. This is therefore the grace and the truth. The reason why you keep talking about man, juju, ghost, mermaid, witch, and apparition is because you do not love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Whoever loves God talks only about God and sees God at all times. Such a person can never indulge in sinfulness because his testimonies are always centered on God. If somebody should come and invite you to Jerusalem or to the desert to see God, do not go, for God can never be found in those places. He dwells in you. If you love God with all your mind, heart, and soul, you will see him. Also, worldly things will never torment you. You will never experience famine or darkness in your life. Christ has said that, Blessed is he whose heart is pure, for he shall see God. Matthew 5, 8 Little did we know that the statement consists of salvation and grace of God. It is also the life and glory of God. The statement is nothing but the truth and is trustworthy. The moment you love your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, you have been completely separated from the world. You would have nothing to do with any other thing apart from the Father. You will always testify of the Father alone. I thank the Father so much because he does not wish that the world should perish. For this reason, he has given this package and has reminded us of the things we had forgotten about. The Father in his infinite mercy shall continue to remind you of this from time to time, to love your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Put your trust in him. You should practice this love and devote your entire heart to loving your God at all times. You should accept him fully. Let the golden text be read. Golden text, Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Surrender your heart. Do not ask questions, argue, or doubt him. Put these words into practice and you will surely see a change in your life. You will no longer talk about any other worldly things, for you would talk about the Father alone. It is said that he who is heavenly speaks of the heavenly things only. When you get to that state, it means you are in heaven. It is said that we err, and everything but whomsoever bridles his tongue is perfect. James 1, 26. Who is that person who does not err with what he speaks? It is he who loves God with all his mind, heart, and soul. If you love God with all your mind, heart, and soul, you would never quarrel, fight, or see evil. You would neither see the day nor night. You would only see the Father in all things and the only one doing all things. All the money in this world would be nothing before you. You would never see any woman, man, dresses, and otherworldly things. All that you would see would be the Father. This is also the reason why it is said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. 1 John 3, 2 If you want to know more, then start practicing this gospel and teach others in the world to practice same. By so doing, you would discover that the kingdom of God is here with you. Since it is not too late to mend your ways, you should start to love your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. The moment you practice these words, you are free. An Illustration 
Suppose a large house is built to house a group of women and it is fenced around to prevent the women from being corrupt. And suppose also that another building is set up in, say, a distance of 300 miles away for men, also with a fence. Would that prevent the women from moving to and from where the men were confined? Have you not gone into the ocean to search for fish, no matter the depth of the sea? It is said that where your treasure is, there also is your heart. When you say that money, woman, and other material things are the cause of all the problems in the world, I refuse to accept it. The cause of all the problems in the world is that man does not love God with all his heart, mind, and soul. And there is no love of God in your heart. Whosoever loves God with all his heart, mind, and soul can never be burnt by fire. He can never see death or apparition. He would never see anything evil no matter where he finds himself. And to such a person, money would be nothing, but he would only see God and the things of God. You are all aware of the fact that I have no regards for the world. I do not even see anything else apart from the Father. Now you are happy, and this happiness has been extended to the whole world. Right from now, I want you to put these words into practice. May the Father bless his holy words. Amen. Thank you, Father. Brotherhood of the Cross and Star Delivered by leader and teacher Alumba Alumba Abu. Compiled by George Morales. Voiceover by Shantaria. I believe in Alumba, the star of Tupanda. Oh, yes, I know. He has given us victory. No matter how the wind blows, can never pull a stone. Surely I know. He has given us victory. He has given us victory over lamentation. Oh yes, I know. He has given us victory. He has given us victory over principalities. Oh yes, I know. He has given us victory. Through the tunnel we strike, the wind may blow. Surely I know. He has given us victory. Every day we will gather. Surely they will scatter. Oh yes, I know. He has given us victory in our houses. He has given us victory. He has given us victory in academies. He has given us victory in our endeavors. He has given us victory in our going out. He has given us victory in our coming in. He has given us victory. Everlasting victory, victory. Everlasting victory. He has given us victory. Glory be to God. In the highest heaven, victory is mine. He has given us victory. My enemies shall love me, say I'm not gonna succeed. Oh. He has given us victory. To the former the brainer, for my every evil when they come my way. He has given us victory. Oh, it's the victory now. Oh, yes, I know oh, victory is now. Oh, it's the victory now. Oh, yes, I know oh, victory is now. We have been reading from the bondage. Surely we are salvaged. Oh, yes, I know. He has given us victory. Light is now a leader. Darkness is the feeder. Truly, I know. He has given us victory. Destruction has been conquered. Nothing can hinder. Oh yes, I know. He has given us victory. He has given us victory. Chant hallelujah. Praise the Lord God for we know. He has given us victory. Everlasting victory. He has given us victory. Victory song. Victory song. He has given us victory. Now I can climb all the mountains, forge all my dreams, cause He has given us victory. Now I can stand firm and count, see, count all the rainbows, cause He has given us victory. And that's for all my enemies, the Father has given them. You know that I'm right. He has given us victory. Surely I know He has given us victory. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
Freedom everywhere. He has given us victory. Melody makers, come out right now. Let's chant for joy. He has given us victory. Songs of victory, songs of jubilation. That is what I want to hear. He has given us victory. He has given us victory over the evil one. He has given us victory. Freedom song. Freedom song. Oh, yes, I know victory is ours. Freedom song. Freedom song.